you can draw this and procreate. During this easy procreate tutorial, we are going to create this impressionistic painting. So it's time to let go of perfectionism and create a bunch of loose, messy strokes. During this tutorial, you won't just learn how to use the brushes that are already in procreate to create this painterly effect, but I will also show you techniques on how you can manipulate the colors and contrast in your painting. Since we are creating something expressive and impressionistic, I think this tutorial is a perfect way to relax. And I'm sure that every result will be totally unique. Don't forget to share it once you have reached the end of the tutorial. If you're sharing it on Instagram, then it would be great if you would tag me in the image, not just in the description, because that way I will be able to find your work, which I really enjoy, and then maybe we will see your work in the next video. Just like these amazing results from my friends at Patreon. If you don't already know it, that's the place you need to go if you have a serious Procreate tutorial addiction, or if you want to get your Procreate painting skills to the next level. I have more than 150 tutorials tutorials there to keep you busy. But now let's get started with this tutorial. The canvas we're working on is 2000 by 3000 pixels. And of course I have added the link to the color palette in the description. And now if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start off by dropping in a color for our background. Let's go to the layer menu, tap background color, and then we'll pick this first color in the first row of our color palette. Then let's go and grab a brush. We'll go to the painting brushes. And then let's grab the spectra brush. And for our color, let's start with this one over here. That's the seventh color in the first row. And for this brush, I have the opacity set to 100%. And let's set the size to 5%. And I will start by creating some bushes. And I want the tops of these bushes to be all about at one third from the bottom of your canvas. We'll just make some of these rounded shapes go a little bit higher over here. Just something like this. Go downward here. Rounded motions. Until you have something like this. You can just keep it loose and messy. Don't worry too much about this. Then let's go ahead and grab another color. Let's go for this one, sixth color in the first row, and also add some darker patches. Something like this. Keep the top part a lighter, and make the bottom part darker. So again, just rounded motions. Fill those areas in. Now let's go grab a different brush. Let's go to the turpentine brush. It is nice and ragged. The opacity of this brush is at 100% and the size, let's set that nice and small, maybe 4%. And for the color, let's grab this one. That's the fifth color in the first row. And now we are going to add some even darker patches. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger actually maybe 8% and add some nice painterly dabs at the bottom here. Nice and messy. And you can see how it also smears the paint around. You can also grab the local color here and then just go over here and add these, these brush strokes. Grab that color, that second color that we used. You can see I'm making these rounded, small motions to get some of that painterly feel. Let's go a little bit lower here. Grab that lighter color again, just to get a nice variation of color and some nice expressive brush strokes. You can also tap and hold the smudge tool, the little finger here. Now it has automatically switched to the turpentine brush and the opacity is still at 100%. Let's set the size to 10 and then you can smudge a little bit without adding any extra color, but you can still add that painterly texture. It's also Drag the lower part downward a little bit. 
later on this is where the reflection on the water will be there will be almost no distinction between the bush area and the water we'll just pull this down all the way to the other side and then let's add a color for our water area we are going to do that on a layer underneath this one so we'll tap the plus then we will drag this layer underneath our bush layer and then for the color for our water we will use this one over here second color in the first row so it's slightly darker than our sky then we will go to the selection tool the s shaped ribbon set it to rectangle and then turn on color fill and then you can simply select the bottom part to about here and then it will automatically fill that area once you let go of your screen next let's make a new layer on top of our bushy layer so on top of layer one we'll tap the plus again and then for our brush let's go back to the spectra brush and for our color let's grab a nice and dark color let's go for this one over here ninth color in the second row and we are going to lay down some patches of well some ground we'll start about here and make a shape like this so a bit of a well a bit of a rounded triangular shape fill it in and then another one over here towards the foreground and don't worry about these shapes too much you can always carve parts off or add parts we are keeping things very loose here then another shape over here something like this fill it in now let's actually carve it a little bit let's go to the eraser and then again go to the painting brushes or actually i want to go to the artistic brushes and use the leather wood brush and let's use that as an eraser let's make it a little bit smaller perhaps six percent opacity is at a hundred percent and then you can go along the edges and you get this really nice texture over here as well let's make the brush even smaller maybe two percent so you can be a bit more precise but still you get those little dabs messy parts and that will add to that painterly feel next let's create our bridge let's make a new layer on top of the others let's tap the plus and then for the brush i want to use the turpentine brush again and for the color let's grab this one ninth color in the first row the opacity of the brush is at 100%. Let's set the size to 4 or 5%. And now we are going to make a curved line from one end to the other. And you need to make multiple strokes to make it more opaque. But it's okay if it's a little bit messy. Don't worry about that. Make it a little bit thicker. stroke on stroke on stroke it's all about the shape at this point just make a slightly curved shape here maybe a little bit more here on the bottom and then another line another curved line on top So that will look like this and then we will go to the layer we'll tap it and turn on alpha lock so we can paint on this area without going outside of that shape now we're going to grab a dark color this one over here eight color in the first row 
and we are going to go over that lower part here. That will be more in shadow and the top part of the bridge is lit. Same goes for this area. And we can add some lighter color. This one, 10th color in the first row. It's very subtle. I'm not sure if you will be able to see it on camera, but it's slightly lighter. And you can just add some dabs. Some parts that are lighter. Perhaps light this up a little bit. Now let's make a new layer on top of this one. Let's tap the plus and let's let's grab that light color again because it's easier to see on a dark background. So ninth color in the first row. And then let's make these vertical lines for these poles. And one over here. And on this side, let's make the brush a little bit smaller, 3%. And then let's make some more. But these are a little bit less long. And then over here. Then we need to add some shading here. First, let me work on the top part here. We need to add some shading so we can turn on alpha lock again on this layer. And then we can grab the darker color again. So that's the eight color in the first row. And we can add shadow here. I just want a little bit of highlight along the edge. Over here, it's quite a lot darker. Let's just make this one entirely dark, more of a shadow area. And then these. And this one. And of course, you can also switch back to the light color, ninth color in the first row if you want to get some of that light back, perhaps, on some of these. So it should look something like this. Then let's make a new layer underneath this one. Let's tap layer four first, then tap the plus. And then let's grab the dark color again. Let's go for this one, 10th color in the first row. And let's make another line. Following that curve. I hope you can see it because it's quite dark. And then again, let's grab the lighter color. First, let's turn on alpha lock on this layer so we can only paint on the shape. But then we'll grab the ninth color in the first row again. And I'll go along the top part for a slight little highlight. Just like this. Once you have this, you can actually pinch these together, these bridge layers. And now let's make another layer underneath this one. So first we'll tap layer three, then we'll tap the plus. And then for the color, let's grab this one, 10th color in the second row. And I will make some more of these vertical lines for the other side of the bridge. Right next to the others. So you'll get something like this, and then let's also create a horizontal, well, a horizontal curved line. And then for the highlights, we need to turn on alpha lock again. So tap the layer, turn on alpha lock, then grab that light color again, the, not the tenth, the ninth color in the first row. And let's add slight highlights right here at the top. Yeah, so something like this. Now let's pinch the layers of the bridge together. And now let's turn off alpha lock on this layer. 
Now I want to adjust it just a little bit. Let's go to the Move and Transform tool. And then let's turn on the Distort here. And then let's stretch it a little bit. And perhaps this is not needed for your bridge. I just want it to be a little bit more squished together. So I'll pull these handles, stretch the bridge a little bit, move it downward slightly. So I'll get something like this. I like this. Then just tap the arrow once you're done adjusting your bridge. And now let's add some clouds. Let's do that on a layer underneath our bush layer. So we need to tap layer two and tap the plus. And then let's grab this color over here, third color in the first row. And for our brush, I would like to use the acrylic brush. The opacity of this brush is at 100%. And I have the size set to 30%. And now we are going to make some rounded shapes in our sky to create a nice fluffy cloud. I'm just making rounded motions. I'll go up here and then make a big fluffy part here. Make rounded motions to fill this area. And it's okay if some parts are a little bit more transparent. You can slowly build it up. It's nice if it has some variation in transparency. Then what we'll do is grab another color. We'll grab the fourth color in the first row. And let's make the brush just a little bit smaller, maybe 15%. And let's add some darker fluffy parts. Again, with rounded motions. Just create some shapes on top. And we're going for something impressionistic here, something loose. So don't worry too much about this. And then you can switch back to the previous color just by grabbing it like that. And then add some rounded shapes right here underneath. So this way you can paint a very basic cloud. Now let's start working on some reflections on our water. Let's first duplicate this layer. Let's slide to the left, tap duplicate, then go to the bottom one and then go to the move and transform to a little arrow and flip it vertical. Then move it downward like this to about here or maybe a little bit higher. Let's squish it a little bit. Let's set this to free form Then use this handle to squish this like this and then tap the arrow. Then let's grab the smudge tool that we used earlier as well. And let's just go over here and make these vertical smudges over here. That reflection wouldn't be visible because this area is in front of those bushes. So let's just smudge it out a little bit. And to make that smudge a bit more soft, let's go to the smudge tool and also use the acrylic brush as a smudge tool. Let's just make it a little bit smaller, maybe 20%. And then let's go over here. You can see that the smudge looks a little bit softer. And also create a bit of a horizontal smudge to create that idea of that water surface. I think for now this looks fine. Then let's also do this for our cloud layer. Let's slide to the left, tap duplicate, then go to the bottom one, then go to the move and transform tool and flip this vertical. Then let's just be sure and turn on magnetics here under snapping and then move it downward like this. Then let's go to the layer, turn on alpha lock here, and then go and grab the fourth color in the first row. And with our brush, with our acrylics brush, let's just go over here and darken this cloud a bit. Make a bit of a darker reflection here. 
Now we need a reflection for our bridge. Let's go to the bridge layer. Let's slide to the left, tap duplicate, go to the bottom one, and let's place that underneath that layer with like the patches of land. Then let's go to the move and transform tool, a little arrow, then use flip vertical and move it downward to about here. Then I'd like to add a little bit of a ripple effect. Let's do that by going to the magic wand, then to liquefy. And while you have it set to push, you can turn up the distortion to max and leave momentum set to none. And you can play around with the size. And then you can push and pull. And at the same time, it'll add a little bit of this ripple effect. So just moving it around a little bit little pinches until you get something that looks a bit like this then let's tap the magic wand again to get out of there and let's continue adding more stuff to our painting let's get started with that all those patches of land let's go to that layer layer three and on this layer, let's work with a different brush. Let's go to the artistic brushes and use the letterwood brush. And let's just drop in a bunch of colors here. For instance, let's grab this one over here. Fourth color in the third row. The opacity of the brush is at 100%, the size at six. And let's just go over here and add some random patches of this green. And over here as well. And on this side as well. Just short little dabs. Then let's switch to this color over here. That's the fifth color in the third row. And let's make the brush a little bit smaller, perhaps 2%. Now let's add some lighter patches here. And over here as well. Now we are going to build up these areas with a bunch of different colors. Let's also grab this one for instance, first color in the third row. Let's use that over here. I want to add some extra land actually extra little patch. We can just build on top of this. A little bit over here. Just want some nice variation. Then let's switch to this color, 10th color and the third row for some brown patches here. Some over here. We can really just play around with this. And then let's switch to this color, fourth color and a second row. Let's just add some purple. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger, 5% for some purplish patches. And now let's first work on some trees. We are going to make those on a layer on top of our bridge layer. Let's tap the plus. And then for our brush, let's go to the painting brushes again and use the spectra brush. And we are first going to create some basic shapes for our trees. Let's start with this color, second color in the third row. And let's create a shape over here, just rounded shapes for one of the trees. Let's also create a shape here wiggly rounded shapes and then let's switch to this pink over here sixth color in the second row and we'll add some pink over here and over here as well it'll nicely contrast with the green of those bushes in the background let's also add some pink here just a little bit and let's also add some purple. Let's grab this color over here. First color in the second row. And let's drop that in here. 
Perhaps a little bit here as well. And let's also grab some brownish tones like this one, 10th color in the third row. And let's place that here. So just rounded shapes, pretty random. Maybe also some of this color, third color in the third row. It's a little bit bluish, greenish. A little bit here. And now let's go ahead and grab the smudge tool again. And then let's just go over here and blend these colors together a little bit. Well, not really blending them, but moving them around and creating a interesting painterly effect by just making these short strokes and also rotating your brush a little bit or your pen. Well, making a rotating move, not rotating your entire pen, making these round movements, pushing and pulling the paint and at the same time creating new color variations. And over here, I think we can add some lighter color so we can just grab the brush again and then let's grab this color, first color in the third row and just add some patches here and then you can switch back to the smudge tool and smudge them in. And to get a more rough effect, you can also use that turpentine brush again as a smudge tool and then go over again and just get a little bit more texture. Do that on both sides. And next I'd like to paint in some more detail by hand. We'll go to the brushes again, then to the drawing brushes and use the Oberon brush. Now for the color, let's first start out with, with this one, with the pink color, sixth color in the second row. And the opacity of the brush is at 100%. Let's set the size to four. And then let's just paint in some dabs here by hand. And you can use multiple colors. We can also use the purple here, first color in the second row. And just drop in multiple colors on top of each other and creating a bit of this leaf effect, especially also on the outside here. Let's also use this darker purple second color in the second row. A little bit over here. Now, if you actually want to be able to switch between colors quickly, what you can do is just drag and hold here. Now let's go to the color palettes. Here we have our color palette. And this way you can simply grab colors that you want and go over these areas very quickly, grabbing a new color each time brown one. You can really just go uh, loose here, go free, grab some colors that are close to the ones in these areas and just go over here with these little dabs. I'm going to switch back to the regular mode, but for you, if you're painting, this can really save some time. Now, if you want to get rid of this, you can simply tap here and then you will have your regular menu again. I'll go back to the disc version. Now let me grab some brown here, eight color in the third row. I'll use some of that over here. And this gives a nice impressionistic feel here. 
Let's also add some here. You can also vary the size of your brush if you want to add some bigger strokes. And what you could also do is grab the smudge tool in between if you want to blend in some of these dabs a little bit. You simply create quick little dabs with the smudge tool to blend these in a little bit. And then you can switch back to the brush and go over again. So you get a layer on top of layer on top of layer of paint. I'm grabbing the second color in the third row again. I think we have a nice, nice little texture here. I want to add a little bit more pink. Let's grab this color actually, fifth color in the second row. Some more pinkish tones. And maybe we can grab a darker color, ninth color in the third row for a little bit of more dark patches at the bottom over here as well. I'll just create some patches and then I want to blend them in a little bit with the smudge tool. It gives it a little bit of a shadow effect there. I want to create a plan that covers the bridge over here a little bit. So let's grab a different brush. We will go to the calligraphy brushes and use the water pen. And now for the color, I would like to use this one over here, 10th color in the third row. Now the opacity is at 100% and let's set the size to 10%. And then over here, let's make some of these pointy leaves. There's a plant over here covering our bridge a little bit. And it has these pointy leaves. Now let's switch to the darker color over here, ninth color in the third row. And we'll add some darker leaves in front. So something like this. Now let's duplicate this layer to also create a reflection on the water for these plants. So let's slide to the left, tap duplicate. Now let's grab the bottom one and drag it underneath here. Now let's go to the move and transform tool, flip it vertical and move it downward. Let's zoom out a little bit. We can also squish it a little bit. Let's just go for something like this. Then tap the arrow and I want to darken this layer a little bit. What you can do is go to the magic wand then to use saturation brightness and then let's lower the brightness a little bit of this layer make it a little bit darker let's also desaturate it a little bit let's go to 37 percent and now let's go back to the layer and then use the smudge tool let's set that to the acrylic brush again so we can create some soft smudges we'll just go over here and smudge it a little bit because it's a bit more blurry on the water. Just a little bit, just something like this. Maybe smudge it a bit more here. And then let's work on some more reflection on the water. Let's do that on a layer on top of our reflection here for the bridge. Let's tap the plus. And then for our brush, let's go to the painting brushes again and use the spectra brush. And then let's grab this local color here and then add some dark spots here. A reflection of that little bump, that patch of land over here as well. And you can use a little pressure so it's a little bit a tiny bit transparent over here as well. And then let's go back to the drawing brushes and use the Oberon brush again. Now we are going to add some nice interest to this water. Let's start by using this color over here. That's the seventh color in the third row. 
and we are just going to add some some stuff on the water it's like there are leaves there stuff is floating on the water surface and it's also covering parts of the reflections just these small dabs across all of these reflections and you can see that I'm making these horizontal strokes in this case and now it really starts to look like something of a Monet painting let's grab this color now that's the eighth color in the second row and let's add some of these purplish dabs and you really don't have to give this a lot of thought just place some of these random dabs let's also grab a darker purple this one over here seventh color in the second row for this shadow area here close to the shore over here as well on top of that dark area that we have just created then let's grab some greens let's grab this one for instance seventh color in the first row and you can really play around with all these colors actually just some of these horizontal dabs also go for a dark green this one over here fourth color in the third row just fill these gaps Maybe we can add some more of that orangey color, that seventh color in the third row to balance things out a little bit. I think this looks really nice and interesting. Let's just add a little bit more to our shores. Let's go to this layer over here and let's add some more plants, some more flowers with this brush. Let's start with this color eight color in the third row and let's add some over here some orange patches like flowers then we'll switch to the brighter color seventh color in the third row and put some on top and then let's switch to a brighter green let's go to this one fifth color in the third row Let's add some over here, just some dabs. And by the way, if you like the impressionistic style, then I think you might also like a tutorial that I have up at Patreon, my Van Gogh flowers tutorial. I'm going to switch to the sixth color in the second row, by the way. In that tutorial, we work in a very loose way with some special painterly brushes. It's a lot of fun. So go check out that tutorial if you like this kind of style. Over here we can vary a bit more with the greens. Let's also grab this color, second color in the third row. Add some more dabs. We can also add some blue. Let's grab this color. You can just tap and hold your screen to grab the color. Maybe add some blue flowers. Maybe to balance things out, we can also add some over here. Now finally, before we call this finished, I want to show you how you can tweak some things in your paintings and just the colors a little bit. For instance, I want to work on our bridge. I feel like it's not standing out enough. So let's go to the layer of our bridge, layer five, and then let's go to the magic wand and then to curves. And while you have it set to gamma, you can pull down the shadows here, make the shadow areas darker, 
And over here, if you pull this up, you can make the light areas lighter. So you can add more contrast to this area of your painting. I'm going to make a curve like this. So a slight curve, pulling up those highlights a bit and adding contrast to our bridge. And then you can tap the magic wand again to get out of there. I also want to push back these bushes in the background a bit, for instance. Let's go there and let's pinch these together because they belong to together, the bushes and the reflection. Then let's go to the magic wand and then go to use saturation brightness. And I'm going to turn down the saturation a little bit and turn up the brightness so that you get that little feel of, of more atmospheric perspective. Things in the background are more faded. They're often more bluish, less saturated. So this will make the foreground pop more. Then let's go to this layer with those trees. I want to give them a little bit of a boost. And to give a layer a color boost, I have a nice brush. First, let's tap this layer and turn on alpha lock. And then let's go to the treasure chest brush pack. In that brush pack, I have the color booster brush right here. And it's a very soft brush and you can use it to, well, boost colors. I want to add some warm tones. Let's just grab a reddish color like this. And the opacity of the brush is at 100% and the size is at 40. And then you can simply go over these areas with rounded motions and you can see it gives a nice warm boost. And you can use this with any color to get special effects. Now, another thing that I like to do at the end of a painting process is merging all the layers. You can slide to the right to select all the layers. What I like to do is group them and duplicate them first. So I'll group these layers and then I'll duplicate the group. But if you can't make enough layers in this case, then I would suggest duplicating your entire project first. So you will always have your layers if you do want to make adjustments later on. Now I'll tap this group and use flatten and I'll turn this one off. And you can see that the sky color isn't actually on this layer if you look really close because we have it on this background color. Now let's just make a layer with that background color so we have all the colors on one layer. So make a new layer, then grab that sky color, that first color in the first row and drag it on there. And now let's pinch these together. So now we have a fully opaque painted layer. And what I'd like to do now is duplicate this. You can slide to the left, tap duplicate. And then what I like to do is tap the N and set this layer to multiply, to multiply blending mode, which adds darkness, adds shadow to your layer. So everything looks darker now, but you can still see the textures in your painting, all the brush strokes. Next, what I like to do is tap this layer and then add a mask and then we'll fill that mask with black. So now you don't see it anymore. Everything is covered, but on this layer mask, we can paint with white. So let's double tap here to grab white. Then for the brush, you can grab a soft brush like the soft brush under airbrushing. Let's set the opacity to 70% and the size to 20. And then you can paint over areas to paint in some shadow and add more contrast to your painting. For instance, we can make the foreground a little bit darker and really make that bridge pop more. I feel like this is a little bit too much, so you can easily adjust it by going to the layer, tapping the M and sliding the opacity slider. I'll go for 30%. Then let's duplicate that bottom layer again, slide to the left, tap duplicate, move this one to the top, and this time we'll tab the end and set the layer to screen so everything gets lighter. Then again, we'll add a layer mask. So we'll tap this, add a mask, then grab black and drag it onto the layer. And then we'll grab white again and then we'll use that brush. And you can add some light in the center, for instance. 
And this is a great way to experiment with colors and with contrast. Of course, you can tap the S again to lower it a little bit. I'll set it to 70. But it's a great way to experiment and give your painting that final tweak. So try it out for your next painting project. Perhaps you'd like to follow this tutorial next. I hope you had fun creating this impressionistic piece. I'd like to thank you for watching and I will see you next time for the next tutorial.